Good morning, good evening, whether, wherever you're watching from us from. Welcome to our Bible study on who is the devil. I'm Pastor John Carlo from Christian Pentecostal Church on Richmond Road in Staten Island, New York. Last week we opened our Bible study about Satan. We see very important things about him and there are many questions about him himself. But let's just take a look at some of the things that we had spoken, mentioned last week, just to keep up what we're doing. He exists. The Bible tells us that. And he existed before men, Adam and Eve were born. And we see he's mentioned at least seven of the Old Testament books and 19 of the New Testament. You can see all the various speakers and the various writers have used his name, of course, usually in the negative. Even Jesus Christ reminds us of him in his ministry. At least 15 times Jesus speaks about or to the devil. One of his favorite words I like is this, get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> Amen. Many times we might have to say that to him. We also see in Ezekiel where there's a tremendous scripture uh, verses that tell us something about Where's, where he came from in heaven and so on. Remember, he was a very important man in heaven. Probably the third between Jesus and, and the Father, he was right in the, in the group there doing things for the Father. Let me, let me share with you Ezekiel 28, 12 to 19, because it tells us in a paragraph way, paraphrase, he's called the, the king of Tyre, which was an old city. And it says here, it's, it's a, a person talking to God, the Lord God talking to Satan himself. Listen to what it says. You were perfect in wisdom and beauty. You were in Eden in the garden of God. Your clothing was bejeweled with many precious stones, rubies and topaz, and diamonds and chrysolite and onyx and jasper and, and sapphire and carbuncle and emerald, all these beautiful things, setting and finest gold. They were given to you on the day you were created. So he's a created being. And he goes on to tell us, again, God is speaking here. He says, I appointed you to be anointed, the anointed garden, garden of the cherubim in charge of all the angels in the, in the heaven and the heavenlies. It says, you walked among the stones of fire. You were perfect in all you did from the day you were created until that time when wrong was found in you. Your great wealth filled you with in, it, with an internal turmoil, and you sinned. Wow. It's interesting here because we're going to see that angels can sin. We call them devils, but they can sin, and they have sinned, and he was the leader in that whole routing of coming against God. It says, you, you are out of the mountain of God like a common sinner. I destroyed you. I over, overflowing cherubim. From the midst of the stones of fire, you, your heart was filled with pride because of all your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom and, and for the sake of your splendor. Even before I have cast you down to the ground and exposed you helpless before the curious gaze of kings, you defiled your holiness with lust for gain and therefore brought forth fire from your own actions and let it burn you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all those watching. All who knew you are appalled, appalled by your fate. You are an example of horror. You are, de you are destroyed forever. Wow. You can read that in Ezekiel 28, 12 to 19. Let, let's look at some of the phrases in here. It's interesting. It says, thou art fallen, right? But thou art full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. This was a, a created being that God created and apparently he was not only high in, in, in the heavens in, in authority, but of course he wasn't God and he wasn't the Holy Spirit and he wasn't Jesus. But he was a man with a lot of responsibility. And we see here, God gave him all this beauty and all these gifts that he had, and unfortunately he messed them up. And he goes on to tell us, you were in Eden. You've been there, the garden of the God. And some have seen that even there, 
after he's been thrown out of heaven, tries to destroy Adam and Eve and all of mankind right from the, its beginnings. We also see that another beautiful description of him. Now listen carefully. He's the, he's the music minister of heaven at, at some point. It tells us that musical instruments were originally designed to be means of praising and worship God. But we see that Lucifer learned to play a musical instrument in order to praise God. He had built, he had a built-in pipe organ. <laughs> in other words, his voice was like singing. And he was an organ with all kinds of music. And we see this description and how it could go to somebody's head, and it did. Then we see he was an anointed cherubim that covereth. He was anointed like in the Old Testament and where there were so many, some 300 or three anointed officers, the priest, the king, and so on, and the prophet. We also see in the word of God, he was described as heaven's prophet priest in some places and king, but he failed in all of these aspects. It went to his head. And we see that by him doing that, he destroyed not only the angels that followed him, we'll be talking more about that, how a third of the angels in heaven follow him out of heaven. Amazing. Imagine all these angels watching and seeing what God is doing, creating and all that, and they follow Satan, or Lucifer as he was called. It's amazing how people even to this day are following Lucifer right into hell through all kinds of pain and sorrow, they still latch on to him, knowing in many cases that they're going down to hell with him. Again, we also see that the Bible tells us there's going to be a day when God is going to punish not only the sinners of the earth, but the sinners that were in heaven. He's going to be punishing Satan, Lucifer. He's going to be punishing all the angels that went with him and tried to de de destroy the people of the earth as well. We're going to stop here because we're going to get into next week a lot more about him. And in a lot of areas, we see that he was a very powerful person. He, he had all the gifts that he w needed to become a very even more powerful person but he decided that he was God himself. That seems to be what he wanted. He wanted to be worshiped like God was worshiped. He didn't want to be the second man or the third man in the batting order. He wanted to be the first. So next week we'll pick up more about him and we're gonna be talking about him and it's amazing that he knows his, soul, his fate, he knows. And in spite of that, he is working against God and God's people and of course the rest of the people in the earth to try to join him in an army that's gonna spend eternity in hell. So God bless you, and we'll see you next week.